Thank you for listening and supporting The Daily Memphian. Sign up for one of our many free newsletters and breaking news alerts at dailymemphian.com slash email to receive the latest local news stories impacting our community. Our weekly newsletters cover everything from sports to arts and culture, business, food, and more, along with daily updates of all the news we publish each day. Sign up or manage your email preferences at dailymemphian.com slash email. Introducing St. Jude Flashpoint. We don't get to choose what happens to us, but we do get to choose how we let it affect us. Rate, review, and subscribe to St. Jude Flashpoint. Hi, I'm Jennifer Biggs, the host of Sound Bites. Thanks for joining us. Today, I have Chris Harrington with me and a special guest. We are going to talk about what happened in 2020. We're going to talk about what's coming up in 2021. And we're going to talk about some holiday foods that we enjoy. You can find new broadcasts of Sound Bites on your Crosstown Radio, WYXR 91.7, Thursdays at 11 a.m. You can also find current and previous podcasts online at The Daily Memphian. Hey, Chris. Hey, Jennifer. Happy New Year. Back at you. Hey, Rosie. Hi. Rosie Harrington is Chris's, as of today, today is Tuesday. Today is her 16th birthday. And on uh, Christmas morning, Chris texted me a Merry Christmas with a picture of Rosie's cinnamon rolls that they were having for breakfast and then followed it up and said, yeah, but look at this. And it was a cake that they brought me a piece of the next day and it was fabulous. Rosie, tell me, tell me the name of the cake and then I'm going to ask you some questions about it. Um, it's a Russian honey cake. Where did you, how did you come up with it? Did you look for it or was it something that, that just happened to be in the New York Times? Um, I took a Russian course a couple years ago and our teacher gave us a honey cake to celebrate the end of course. And so I remembered it and I wanted to make it. Well, it was one of my favorite cakes I've ever tasted. Maybe, I mean, I've raved about this to everybody that I've had the opportunity to talk about cake with since <laughs> I tasted it. The cake was so tender. Now, you started it. We don't it won't go into the, the whole, we'll send a, we'll put a link to the recipe up with this, uh, with the story so people know how to make it. But you kind of burn the honey to start, right? Yeah, it was mm. kind of like boiling it. And that's where the flavor just, I'll give you a little profile of it's, it's kind of carrot cakey, but of the texture is not at all. It was just the lightest cake it makes you almost feel like you're eating something good for you, which, you know, I read the ingredients. I know it wasn't good for me. <laughs> There's a lot of cream in it, but it really was, the cake was real light, but it had that, you know, cinnamon and uh, allspice, those kind of flavors in it, like a carrot cake does. And so, what, lots of heavy cream and sour cream then, right? Um, no sour cream, and but the icing was mostly heavy cream. Tell her about the Dolce de Leche disaster. Oh, yes. The store, we could not find any Dolce de Leche, so I had to make my own with sweetened condensed milk, roasting it in the oven, and that was um, a little intense. <laughs> It's all safe, but people do that. You know, that's how they used to make caramel cakes all the time. They boil the cans in water, boil them in pots of water, and then empty them to make um, caramel cakes, but they would explode. And obviously, they didn't happen very much, probably as often as a pressure cooker would actually explode, but they could. So did y'all have, you had a disaster or just... Just that we couldn't find Dolce de Leche at the store, so she had to improvise that. And you did it, what, in the oven? Is that right? Yeah, just in the oven with the water, like Jennifer said. Except, well, in the oven sounds a lot safer than doing it on the stovetop. At least if it exploded, it exploded inside. So, right. good idea. Well, well no, you, you, didn't, you, didn't heat it, already, you didn't heat it in the cans. No, I poured it into a... Um, bowl and put it in a big pan of water and then heated it in the oven. Well, sounds a lot more reasonable than my aunts and my grandmother who would just throw cans of sweet <laughs> <laughs> in 
in pots of boiling water. And probably every other woman who used to make caramel cakes back then, that's how they did it too. I, I looked up a recipe and the recipe I looked up didn't have the Dolce um, de Leche, nor did it, but it did have sour cream in the frosting. So I'm glad that y'all sent me the link to the one you made because that's the one I want. We're going to have to talk about a price. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to need that cake soon. I'm talking to <laughs> about it. At some point here before long, I'm going to have to get one from you. And um, so I, I'm going to want your commitment right now that you will make one for, yeah. for a fair oh. price. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Rosie has been baking. When did y'all get her? You got her KitchenAid for her birthday or Christmas when? A year or two ago? Christmas two years ago? Maybe. Yeah. Two or three? I don't know. Well, she's she's quite a baker, so I, I've been with everything that I've seen in this cake. I was so happy to to see y'all on day after Christmas. It was a it was a hit. Thanks that uh, it's a good thing you gave me two pieces because everybody devoured that first one right away. But I'd put one back if, for the kids who never got to taste it because that was <laughs> for me. Thanks for joining us, Rosie. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, Chris, what did I know? What 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 did you cook for the holidays? Oh, I mean, the holidays at this point are so long ago. I can't even remember. We we've had well, we we've had quite the rotation. My 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 mother in law is has come to spend a month with us. So instead of our normal like two people cooking and rosy baking rotation, we've had three people cooking and rosy baking. So I believe on Christmas Day, since it was just the you know just our own household and my my mother in law, um, my wife did a roasted chicken that she brined in some kind of brown sugar chili concoction. I don't know. We had a roast chicken and mashed potatoes, so we kept it pretty simple um, for Christmas Day. My my most recent sort of cooking um, adventure that I had done, I had not done before was I've been meaning to, to try this for years. I just hadn't done it. I'm going to try to start cooking more fish. And having more fish mm-hmm. on our diet, uh, and this is not exactly a healthy variation, but I made trout amandine, which which turned out very well. So, I mean, you did the actual you put the yeah the butter the almonds in the butter and the whole thing. Yeah, I I I, I sort of tried to mimic the 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 original the OG restaurant iris version of trout amandine. Mm-hmm. Most recent time I had it there, it was a redfish amandine, and it was served with a ratatouille which was delicious. That seemed a little, the ratatouille seemed a little ambitious for me. And so I did it the way that he used to do it, um, which was with on a, um, a pureed cauliflower um, base. So I, I roasted, ca- yeah. yeah. So I roasted cauliflower and then made a puree from the roasted cauliflower and then just did a basic, you know, trout amandine, you know, butter and lemon and, 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 and almonds. And, and it was quite good. I was, I was very pleased. You know, that was back when that, uh, cauliflower puree was, I loved it wherever I had it. The, Mac Edwards also had uh, one at the farmer that he would serve under shrimp and grits with brown butter. Yeah. So good. And then the one at Iris. And now cauliflower is like, it's like uh, Brussels sprouts. You just can only have so much of it in your lifetime. And if you've been eating out for the last five years, you've had yeah. all you want. It's, it's pretty rich. I got to say that the amandine, which is, but you know, it's sort of a skillet fried fish with a brown butter almondy sauce. And then on the, on the puree cauliflower, it was a pretty rich dish, but I just, you know, maybe I'll come up with some other side or, or pairing in the future. But that, that I felt was something I could, I could figure out in the kitchen, whereas the ratatouille, I wasn't as confident in my abilities. Well, you know something that, that might be a good side? Here's something that I bought for the first time this weekend. I haven't cooked them yet, but I love them. Um, I bought sunchokes. I saw them for the first time at the grocery. I was at Cordova Farmer's Market. I had my whole, gosh, you know, like five or six places to to try to get to on Saturday in all that rain. And I went in there and I saw sunchokes and one of the recipes that I'm going to try, um, they're just, you do them like roasted potatoes, like, like smashed and roasted potatoes. That would be a good side for them. Well, my official, my, to, to thread both of those things together, my, my official pandemic comfort meal, which I've been making about twice a month, has been blackened catfish with cheese grits and then some kind of side. And it's always some farmer's market, something or another, right? So last week I did it with some, some, some black eyed peas, you know, we'd gotten at the market and my wife made turnip greens a couple of weeks ago or not turnip greens, collard greens a couple of weeks ago, which we got at the market. But 
that's been my that's been my comfort meal of the pandemic because I make blackened catfish with cheese grits and some kind of farmer's market kind of side, basically twice a month. The I would like to okay, I eat plenty of fish. That's something I cook at home a lot when I'm cooking it. If I'm cooking at home, I'm almost always having fish. But I think what I might do, what I might say, my resolution for 2021 would be sort of an anti-type of uh, anti-health. I like to learn to fry more. That's just something I don't do. I don't fry food very much. And I would really like to make fried catfish. You know, we, we, I got a, I got a, like a tabletop or countertop deep fryer for Christmas, like 10 years ago. And it stayed in, in in the box in my closet for nine of those years and I finally got it out earlier this year, and I went through a little fried catfish jag back during the summer, I guess. And I've just decided it's ultimately too much trouble. I don't like dealing with all the grease and dealing just. I, I I can go I can go out to get my fried catfish and my fried chicken and all of that. I just decided I don't. I'm, I'm sort of going the the other way. I'm going to fry less at home. I think. Well, I never fry in the house. If I fry, and I don't do it very often, but the fryer set up outside. It's like the grill. And so it's sitting, it's sitting there. You can plug it in, fry it. And you don't actually, you know, you can just take, you can just strain the grease and use right. it again if you want to do that. I have a friend who just keeps his covered and keeps the um, the grease in it and just. Oh, I haven't it. replaced the grease. <laughs> I, I, but but I still have, like, I have a canister. It's got a lid on it. But I have a canister of, like, the oil or whatever just, like, up on a shelf. I don't know. It seems like a lot to deal with. Yeah. Well, I have a thing of baking grease now at, by my stove. You know, that only started sometime this year. So obviously that's something I started doing more of in 2020 because I've never in my life had the little mason jar, but I've never had the container of baking grease and I have it now. I, does that just happen at some point if you live in the South that you've got the baking grease in your in your kitchen? I, this is something I've thought about for years. I've never, I've never actually done it, and I, and I wonder. I assume so. You're, this is not something you ever put in a fridge, refrigerator or anything. Is this something you keep covered? No. Well, yeah, it's in a mason jar, okay. but it, it just has the little lid on it, and then you know, I pour off anytime I make bacon. It just goes in there. I'm not sure that I've used it for anything. I should put. I should make. Well, some if you're gonna be frying it. chicken, that's what you need to use it for, right? Oh, I, yeah, or cornbread. You know, you good in the bottom of a cornbread. Um, Oh yeah, that's good. But also, yeah, I, th- I, th- I think of the line. It's not a Rolling Stone song, but I know their version of it. There's the line that says, "Mama's cooking chicken fried in bacon grease. Come along, boys, it's just down the road a piece." Ooh. So that's my association. Yeah, no, that if I and I am going to fry some chicken at some point this year. That's going to happen. Uh, fried chicken and not in a deep fryer. But that I want to do in a skillet. Which brings me to something we were just talking about before we went on the air. Okay, last night I went to. Pimentos because they have a Monday night special buy a burger, get a burger free. And the burger at Pimento is fantastic. Natalie, are you going to jump in? I know you had that burger last night too. Yeah, it's my favorite burger in Memphis for sure. Of all the burgers. So last night, Y'all did it to go. Uh, we actually went and ate there. They also have, uh, I mean, it's just its just a really good Monday night deal. You buy a burger, get a burger, and then they have $4 draft beer. So you can get a local beer for and a burger and it's it was great it was super you had the regular burger right yeah it's so big if I get anything other than the regular burger I'm definitely not going to finish it and I can barely finish the regular burger but it's delicious now, now, now for listeners who may not know or you know more midtown downtown people maybe like me but Mentos is a single location right and it's on Poplar no out there's, there's, one, there's one in Fireville too Okay, I didn't. I did not know there was a second, but there is one. There's, there's East Memphis locations off Poplar, right? Yeah, it's kind of yes. near International Paper and in that same right. strip that Babalu <laughs> is in. And it, it, um, it, holiday ham and tomatoes are the same family, and it was it when it first started. It was holiday ham and Memphis pimentos when they opened in Knoxville. Now going forward, everything that opens will be a pimentos, but you can't, as far as I can. You can't get the burger at Holiday Ham. It's only at Pimentos, which would be in Collierville or the one that we we're just talking about on Poplar. It, one thing I want to come back to about Babalu in a minute, but let's 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 circle where we started with the the frying. When I said I wanted to skillet fried chicken, 
my, one of my favorite things in the world is skillet fried okra. And Natalie last night got okra for her side with her burger. I went with French fries because French fries are great. But this is what you always get there, right? Always, every time. But I do love the fries too. So my husband will get the fries with his burger. I get the okra and then we just kind of share. That way we both get to enjoy our favorite sides. Yeah, I feel like, as I said before, said all fair, I feel like okra, fried okra is an underrated side dish, not just for, you know, the southern vegetable plate, meat and three, but as I say, like a French fry substitute side dish, you don't see it enough. And like my my favorite burger or used to be, I haven't been there in years, but my favorite burger in the in the wider area was always at Phillips Grocery in Holly Springs, Mississippi. And they they had fried okra as, you know, their list of sides, you know, French fries, fried okra, whatever. I would always get the fried okra with my burger. So now I've never had the fried okra at Phillips Grocery. I've had the burger. It's great. But how does that fried okra stand up to one that I know we both like, which is Soulfish's? Oh, I, it's been so long. I don't remember. I feel like it's a little, it's definitely the same kind of like eat it with your hand. You know, it's not skillet fried okra. I mean, I, I like you prefer skillet fried okra, but when you're eating it like with a burger, I think you want like the perfectly fried individual nuggets. You can like scoop like, you know, like popcorn shrimp or whatever and pop in your mouth. So it was definitely more of that variety. I feel like I remember it being a little more fried than that, a little, even a little crisper. Uh, it may it may have well been a frozen. I don't know, but like that's fine with me. Like a good fry, a good frozen fried okra, I will not turn my nose up at. I agree. Hey, I would like some fried okra, and I would like some catfish. So I might be getting lunch from Saltfish today. That sounded good. When we left um, last night, when we left at Pimentos, we went in, you know, around seven, and Babalu was open. We left at eight oh six. Probably was already closed. This 25% occupancy, plus the fact that I think it, people are kind of getting scared to be back out again. It, it was it was tight as a tick. All the tables up by um, by eight o'clock or eight o six anyway. And I don't know. I do know it was open because there were people in there when we went by the first time. There were only in the hour that we were in Pimentos, we had um, there were three other tables very widely spaced out. I mean, you didn't have to, there were a couple of people coming in and getting things to go, but that was all there were. There was one table when we walked in another table that was seated and then a third that came in at some point too. But if you, if you're going to be out, say a restaurant might be a pretty place to be if you're trying not to be people or that would be my experience looking from last night. Anyway, um, let's take a quick break and we're going to come back and talk about something else about fish. Introducing St. Jude Flashpoint. We don't get to choose what happens to us, but we do get to choose how we let it affect us. Rate, review, and subscribe to St. Jude Flashpoint. Chris, where do you stand on ta- on canned tuna? I am I'm extremely anti-canned tuna. Ooh, and wow. it is the smell bothers me so much, I can't even get to the taste part of it. And so I forbid it from being in my home. You forbid? Bid tuna from being in your home. Canned tuna, yes. No canned tuna will cross my door. Is that all canned fish? I mean, I, I, I mean, effectively yes, but I don't, I don't, I don't think there would be an attempt to bring any other canned fish in, through my door. So, canned fish is not something that lives in my house. I am such a fan of canned tuna. I love canned tuna. I love it. Canned tuna and oil, canned, uh, you know, anchovies, kippers, all the canned fishes. I'm, I'm a big fan. So I came across an old article um, in a food and wine magazine because I have stacks and stacks and stacks of things that I never get to. And it, it, it reminded me of the program at, you know, Bishop with the, the, the 10 seafood. So I said, I'm going to go to Fresh Market and pick up some really good canned tuna because I will sometimes do that. I'll go and spend like $10 a jar for canned tuna because it's really good stuff. Oh my gosh, y'all, I mean, $10 a jar is one thing. That seems kind of um, ridiculous, but they had things there that were like three ounces, $20 of tuna belly. I, I just couldn't bring myself. I did get some octopus and I did get uh, some anchovies and I got some canned salmon, canned smoked salmon, because I like the canned smoked trout. 
but just those three little things, um, you know, I spent over $30 on canned fish that I'm going to give a try to today. This doesn't interest you though. This is, this is maybe, maybe, maybe the fancy stuff doesn't stink. I don't think I've ever been in the, um, in the same room with the, with the, the high end, high tone, fancy pants, um, canned tuna. So I don't know. Oh, it's going to smell the same. If, it's, if, it's, if you don't like it, you don't like it. Well, but I, I'm against it then. So you're really just, unless it's catfish, that's just really where you stand on fish. You love the catfish. No, 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 no. I, I know. I canned. I mean, does catfish come in a can? I've never seen that before. Um, mm, not yet. Maybe. Yeah, no. No, I'm pro fish. I'm just anti canned, at least canned tuna. You're just trying to cook more fish. Yes. Not that you don't like it. It's just that you don't typically. No, cook I, I'll it get it fresh or frozen, but I don't. I don't. I don't like the smell. The whole. The whole vibe of canned tuna gives me the willies. Honestly, really? I'll take what Chris doesn't want. I love canned fish. I am so glad to hear that. Do you like all of it? Also, I mean the tuna. The canned we really salmon, just I'm eat not tuna and out. salmon. And that's about it. But I'm not opposed to other kinds. That's just what we always have on hand. I have, you know, well, we'll find out. Let's count the cans of uh, canned fish in my pantry whenever we get in there to the to the pantry reorganization. The I redid my pantry. It was because I couldn't find any tuna in this in this house that I you know still live in that was built in the fifties, and the the way the the pantry was built, it was about two feet deep and about four feet wide, and there was no lighting in it. I was always buying tuna, and I could never find tuna anywhere. And finally, one day, I cleaned it out, intent on finding some tuna, and I found 30 cans of it. And I said, you know what? It's time to, <laughs> it, we have to do a kitchen remodel. We ha- I've got to have a pantry, and it turned into all kinds of things. But there could probably be about 32 cans of of fish in there now just because I have no idea what's in my pantry. Natalie keeps promising me she's coming over here to help me. Um, I get am. Through. We just Huge can't day. find a day that we both agree on. I'm dying to get in that pantry. She likes doing this kind of stuff. She My, just my, my, my wife would join you to help. It would, it would give her great pleasure. She loves throwing things away and reorganizing things and cleaning stuff out. And she would, you, you might have to, she might pay you to come, to come do that. Honestly. Well, you know what? If she doesn't have to pay me a penny, and and she and Natalie, I can. I'm happy to. Uh, I'll come bake with Rosie. We'll we'll bake. A, I'll come home, and they can just. If I don't know what's gone, I'll never miss it. I'll tell you that. It's a thing that. I don't know. I mean, I really do have to get control of it. It's I buy these things with the intention of cooking them. I never get around to it because I eat out so often, so it just ends up staying in the pantry and it is full. It is full right now. I mean, got to find some room in there. Um, okay. What's coming up this week? We have, I'm starting, uh, Kelly is doing, English is doing an online cooking class starting tonight. And this looks pretty ambitious. He sent me the, um, the list and I think we're making five sauces. It looks like, five sauces. I'll know more about it after I do it, but it, it there's a, um, we're going to make, yeah, we're going to make nine sauces. It looks like four herb sauces, five herb sauces and four brown butter sauces. And then we're going to put the sauce over. You get fish, beef, or chicken of your choice. So I'm looking forward to to starting that tonight. This will be a weekly thing that he's going to do every month, I believe. That's going to be fun. Get in and do a little bit of cooking with Kelly, who, Chris, you do not hunt, right? I don't. I, I am... My my me and my dad and my brothers who live in Memphis, the four of us are the only men in our family who do not hunt. So I, I'm an outlier, but I but I do not. I was pretty sure that you didn't, but I would, was making sure. One thing that um, I noticed when I was looking up the list for the cooking class is Kelly will also, because the restaurant is shut right now, he will process, not, it won't butcher, but will process your uh, wild game into a whole list of things. If you want to bring in your 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 deer or your duck or your goose or whatever it is that you have um, you've hunted, 
he'll turn it into whatever gumbo or the, the, I mean, he'll, he'll cook squirrel for you and turn it in. <laughs> he will, I think he does squirrel piccata. I really do. I, I always remember there was an Anthony Bourdain episode where he went to the Ozarks and went out duck hunting with these guys. And then he cooked for them and they had no idea how to cook the duck. They were duck hunters and they had no idea how to cook it. Like they, like just, they just never actually ate what they shot. I don't know what they did with it. And then that, that rhymed for me. Cause I remember growing up, there was lots of people duck hunting and we never ate duck. But this isn't that true. I think of a lot of people. Yeah. And when I know that, and I've always said, I'll take, if anybody's hunting it and not cooking it, I'll take it and cook it. But the couple of times that I've ever done that, it cooks differently from just like duck you buy at the grocery. Right. You have to mess with it, but you also have to pull out the buckshot was, that was something that it surprised me so much. And I don't know why that would have surprised me because of course it was killed by something didn't just die well we i eat deer all the time growing up deer that had been killed by you know my, my stepdad or my grandfather or whatever like that was just common like eating deer steak usually fried whatever but we never ate duck even though there were always people going out duck hunting i think that when i was young really young um i believe that i ate squirrel i know my mom did and I, I, know I, did. That- I, I have eaten squirrel yes not and- regularly but it has happened Well, I think, but these were not like the kind of squirrels that you think of living in the city. These are like those red fox squirrels that you see out in the country. They're a little bit meatier, at least. I mean, really, what would you do with a kind of squirrel, a gray squirrel? That wouldn't make much of a meal, I wouldn't think. But some of those um, red red fox squirrels are pretty big. I don't have, I mean, I don't hunt at all. That's not a thing. And I don't cook wild game either, so. But if if you have some, Kelly will turn it into to something good. Um, in 2021, right now we're just sort of sitting. We restaurants are at 25 percent until at least January 22nd. They are many of them aren't even do, open for anything except takeout. So I'm going to sort of resurrect quarantine cuisine, see what people are cooking, and. Um, get back in the swing of it. I've been out for two weeks. This is, it's, it's like a new world. And I was really out. I mean, I was, I spent most of, of my time with my family and my friends. Um, I did eat wild boar, by the way. I just thought, oh wow. Yeah. It, I'd love to be able to say it tastes like chicken, but it, it tasted like pig. Tasted just like you were eating, uh, you know, any, didn't, I couldn't tell any difference from that. And it didn't have a game any taste at all but it was cooked in us you know like barbecue type sauce and good and tender anything else going on what are you working on um you know grizzly season has started it's the 20th anniversary of the team in memphis so i've been doing a historical series i've done a couple of looking back over the 20 years in, in memphis and other than that trying to get back into the groove of the new year me too well we will get in it and um the new year will go on for coming on and talking with me tell rosie i'm very serious about that cake next time i need a cake i am calling i'm never making a cake again just the saving of having to clean the kitchen because that's the messiest thing in the world to make for me is a cake oh yeah i know we, she she tends to bake late at night and we get up in the morning while she's asleep and we go into the kitchen and it is it is a disaster area well it, it, they you make a huge mess making a cake i don't know why it has to be such a messy thing but uh i'm never going to have to make one again now that i've got the hook up i will talk to you soon thanks thanks jennifer In-depth journalism in the Memphis community, The Daily Memphian is of Memphis, not just in Memphis, and seeks to tell the stories of this city. TheDailyMemphian.com. Truth in place.